So let's talk a little bit about differential diagnosis of primary biliary cholangitis. I'm going to offer you a relatively wide differential diagnosis. The reality is that if you have a positive AMA, and histologically you can demonstrate bile duct damage, it's very likely, in fact, it's more likely PBC than any other potential diagnosis. But there is indeed a legitimate differential diagnosis and I like to divide them into three groups. The first group is the hepatitis pattern that mimics PBC. We talked a little bit about autoimmune hepatitis, but there are other forms of hepatitis that can also damage the bile duct. Then there's the granulomas. So granulomas in the liver raise a relatively broad differential diagnosis. We'll focus on sarcoidosis, but potentially any other granulomatous disorder could potentially mimic PBC. And finally, diseases that can damage the bile duct. And this is a relatively long list. I'm going to show you just three potential diagnoses. This is autoimmune hepatitis. There's interface hepatitis. We talked a little bit about this. You can see plasma cells in PBC. You could also see inter interface hepatitis in PBC. The difference lies in the bile duct. Notice that bile duct, it looks a little disheveled, I agree, but the inflammation is not centered around the bile duct. If you look at PBC, you will notice that the inflammation is centered largely around the bile duct. This is the same case of autoimmune hepatitis. This time the inflammation is lobular. Often in autoimmune hepatitis, you'll see centrizonal accentuation of the inflammation. And I find that a very comforting feature of autoimmune hepatitis. Tend not to see that in PBC. Now I use this image. This is hepatitis C infection, something we don't see very much of anymore, to demonstrate the fact that other forms of hepatitis, such as viral hepatitis, can damage the bile ducts. This is a copper stain. This is a patient with primary biliary cholangitis, and you can see periportal copper accumulation. A copper stain is an incredibly helpful stain to distinguish a disease that primarily affects the bile duct. That's when copper stain is, tends to be positive versus a hepatitis inflammation of the hepatocytes where the copper stain is negative. So if you do see a copper stain that's positive, think biliary disorder. The next big category is diseases where you see granulomas in the liver. Let's talk about sarcoidosis specifically. In sarcoidosis, you not only see granulomas in the portal tract, but you also see granulomas in the liver. Generally, the granulomas tend to spare the bile ducts. Occasionally, you can have granulomatous destruction of the bile ducts in sarcoidosis. I think the one major difference between PBC and sarcoidosis is that the granulomas tend to be larger. They tend to be more cohesive and they tend to coalesce together to form a cluster of granulomas. The granulomas in PBC tend to be less well-formed, biliary-centric, and do not coalesce. And finally, this category, where you see histologic damage to the bile duct. The most talked about in this category is obviously primary sclerosing cholangitis. This is classic primary sclerosing cholangitis, Notice the periductal onion skin type fibrosis. I can promise you that the vast majority of cases of PSC will not show this onion skin type fibrosis. I'll also point out to you the damaged bile duct. In fact, these ducts look shriveled up. That's pretty typical of primary sclerosing cholangitis. The other point I'll make is that PSC tends to be parsi inflammatory. So you do not see too many inflammatory cells in the portal tract while well, PBC tends to be much more inflamed. And here's another image of primary sclerosing cholangitis. Notice that that bile duct is barely recognizable, but there is this onion skin type fibrosis around the bile duct. How do you tell the difference between PBC and PSC? Clinical features. PSC, as shown in this picture, shows this beaded cholangiographic appearance. This is classic. Do you see it classic as this in every case? The answer is no. And that's where you as a pathologist come in. And most importantly, PSC is AMA negative. This is augmented induced biliary injury. Notice that bile duct shows significant damage. Drugs, as you well know, can potentially do anything in the liver.
and you must consider a drug-related injury, whether it be a primary biliary destructive disease or a primary hepatitis. Perhaps the best way to tell whether it's PBC or whether it's a drug-related bile duct injury is look for cholestasis. In most cases of drug-related liver injury, acute cholestatic injury, you will see bile plugs as seen here in this case of augmented related liver injury. PBC, on the other hand, you will not see bile plugs until you arrive at the late phase of the disease. So in the early phases of the disease, you will not see bile plugs as shown here. One final form of bile duct injury, notice that bile duct is barely recognizable. Many of the biliary cells have essentially dropped out. This is graft versus host disease, where the target cells are not the hepatocytes, but are the bile duct cells. Finally, here's a classic image of a florid duct lesion in PBC. And although I've offered you a relatively wide differential diagnosis, I can't emphasize this enough. If you can prove bile duct injury in a middle-aged woman with a positive AMA, that is PBC until proven otherwise.